What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafted Workshop video. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to turn a pile of scrap wood into these chaotic ingrain cutting boards. Stay tuned. It seems to be a rite of passage for woodworkers to make cutting boards. Somehow I had skipped over this project during my woodworking adventures so far, and since the holidays are here, it seems like the perfect time to rectify that oversight. I bought this pile of scrap hardwood off of Craigslist for 40 bucks to use on this project. Once I got it home, I sorted through the pile and organized the wood by type, and also threw out any pieces that were too small to use. The pile included cherry, walnut, maple, hickory, and oak, and I also added a few scraps of paduke that I had from a previous project. I set aside the oak for another project since it's not a great choice for cutting boards due to its open grain structure, and then I started breaking down the pieces into blanks. The nice thing about making ingrain cutting boards is the thickness of the piece doesn't really matter since it's all going to be glued up, sliced up, and then turned on in. This means that I had some blanks that were half an inch thick and some that were two inches thick. So this makes a really effective project for using up all those odd sized scraps that you've been hanging on to. When arranging blanks, you want the height of the pieces to be roughly uniform, otherwise you'll just be spending a lot of extra time at the planer later on in the project. Having the length uniform is less important since we'll be cutting uniform slices from these blanks anyway. I just continued processing my scraps into blanks until I had seven unique blanks. Once I had my pieces arranged the way I wanted them, I passed them through the planer, planing each side of the pieces. This gives the pieces two flat surfaces for the glue up, which will help in eliminating gaps in the final boards. Once the pieces were flat on two sides, I glued them together using Tight Bond 3, which is a food safe, waterproof wood glue. Tight Bond 2 isn't technically waterproof, just water resistant, so it's probably best to use 3 for this build. After the glue dried overnight, I began flattening the blanks. Since the bottoms of the blanks were relatively flat from the glue up, I just passed them through the planer, flattening one side, then flipped them over and flattened the other. My joiner is not wide enough to flatten these boards since they're 13 inches wide, and I basically built these cutting boards to the maximum size my planer could accommodate. Once the blanks were flat on both sides, I took them to the table saw, cleaned up one end, and then started cutting slices. I wanted my cutting board's final thickness to be two inches, so I cut two and one eighth inch strips from the blanks to allow some room for surfacing after gluing. After making each cut, I turned the slice 90 degrees to show the ingrain and set it aside. Once I had all of my blanks cut, I started arranging them into their final orientation. I made sure to put any knot holes or other imperfections facing down whenever possible. These boards will have rubber feet added, so the top will be the only side used as an actual cutting board. With the strips arranged how I wanted them, I glued them up using the same process as before. I made sure to keep them as flat as possible here since any slipping at this point will just mean wasted width, length, or thickness on the final cutting boards. After the glue dried, it was time to flatten the boards one last time, and for this I used my planer. Now this is a bit of a debated topic in the woodworking community. Some folks say that passing an ingrain cutting board through a planer is a really bad idea since the pieces can theoretically break apart or the whole board can even be thrown back at you. This is my disclaimer, do whatever you feel comfortable with here and I am not responsible for your choices in the shop. What I did and what worked for me was the following. First, I rotated my blades right before flattening these boards. It was time for fresh blades anyway and having super sharp blades certainly helped here. Second, I took extremely light passes. On this DeWalt planer, I turned the handle a quarter turn between passes, and this took less than 1 32nd of an inch off the boards on each pass. Last, I chamfered the back top edge of the board before starting the flattening. This really helped to prevent any chipping at the edges during the flattening process. You could also add a sacrificial board to the back of the boards to help with chipping. I just took my time, and the boards turned out close to finish ready right off the planer. After the boards were flattened, I cleaned up one edge on the jointer. If you don't have a jointer, you could certainly use a belt sander or something else to flatten one edge. You definitely don't need a jointer for this project. And then cleaned up the other three edges at the table saw. As you can see, you'll be left with a really great looking board at this point. Next it was time for sanding, lots and lots of sanding. I started at 80 grit going over every surface of the boards until any remaining tool marks were removed. 
Since these are ingrained, the sanding process will take a little longer. After 80 grit, I moved on to 120 grit, again sanding all the faces. After 120, it would be a good time to fill any gaps or cracks you have. So you have a few options, either wood glue and sawdust or epoxy and sawdust. Again, since only the top of these boards will see use, I only filled any gaps in the tops. Once that was done, I chamfered all the edges of the boards with a block plane. I originally tried to use a router with a chamfer bit here, but was getting a lot of chip out and the block plane worked really great for this. Finally, I finished the sanding process with 180 grit, sanding the chamfers as well on this step. With sanding done, it was time for finishing. So finishing cutting boards is another hotly debated topic in the woodworking community, but I decided to go with the classic mineral oil finish. Just make sure to get food safe mineral oil. I'll have a link to the exact oil I purchased in the video description and build article. Applying mineral oil is basically foolproof. Just pour it on and wipe it in, allowing the wood to absorb as much as it can. This has got to be the most satisfying moment of this whole build, and as Wayne so eloquently put it, <laughs> So just apply plenty of finish, allow it to soak into the wood for an hour or so, then come back and wipe off the excess. Wait 24 hours, do the same thing again, and the board will be ready to use. There are plenty of other finish options for cutting boards as well, and a lot of people add some type of wax, usually beeswax or paraffin wax, to their mineral oil for the final coat, and just do some research and pick your favorite. Also, shout out to David Picciuto. He just came out with a new cutting board book. I picked up a copy and it is great. I'll have a link to that in the video description as well. With the finish applied, all that's left to do is add some rubber feet and get to cutting. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. This project was a lot of work, but I am just so pleased with the results. I mean, these things turned out beautiful, way better than I ever imagined. Now, I probably could have gotten even more cutting boards had I made my boards a little thinner, but I like a really beefy cutting board. I do a lot of cooking and I want my cutting board to stay in place. So that's why I made them thicker. Obviously you can make them thinner if you want. Um, these are a great gift item. Obviously Christmas is right around the corner and with five days until Christmas, I think you have time to get one of these done if you would like. If this is your first time to the channel, maybe consider getting subscribed. I put out new project videos like this every Tuesday. And last, if you wanna support me, check out some of the Amazon affiliate links in the video description below. Those cost you nothing and really help to fund future projects. Thanks again for watching guys and until next time, happy building.